Captain Chad Gabs, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. This is TFE TV. All right, so we're going to talk about dogfighters. All right, and this is going to come uh, from a little bit of a different vantage point. I've actually known three former dogfighters, okay? And so I was actually able to pick their brains a little bit. So my vantage point is a little bit different, but first, let me start off by completely denouncing dogfighting. Uh, I despise it. Um, and I definitely don't want anybody to take what I'm about to say as a way of me advocating for it or getting behind it in any facet at all, okay? Because that's not what I'm doing at all. I'm just going to talk about a little bit of what I spoke with them about. And it was interesting to learn, okay? So <clears throat> let's just start off by acknowledging the reason that they started breeding American Pit Bull Terriers, okay? There's no debating the initial reason what they were breeding for was game. The willingness and the desire to fight. Small prey and other dogs. All right, This is what they were going for. There's no debating that. This is genetically crammed into them. And so with that being said, their purpose, okay, their reason for being, it would get triggered like that. Okay, Dog to dog aggression, dog to small rodent, small animal aggression. All right, and a lot of people will say you don't have a true American Pit Bull Terrier unless the dog is dog aggressive, unless the dog is animal aggressive. Not human aggressive, just animal aggressive. They didn't want them to fucking want to bite all the people. They wanted them to literally desire to fucking crush the dogs, all right? Crush the rodents. Okay, so with all that being said, you know, there's a reason that dog fighting is so prominent. Now it's always gonna remain underground because clearly it's not socially acceptable, accepted, and it never will be, and it never should be, all right? There's a reason it's underground. It's a reason why people do not talk about it and on the internet, but it is very prominent. It, there is an entire world of dog fighting. That is a fact, okay? Now, would I per se want to personally expose myself as somebody trying to shut one down, shut a dog fighting ring down. Me, personally, got a family? No, because you're dealing with pretty hard people, hardened people that are likely pretty dangerous themselves. So I personally would never involve myself in anything like that. Um, when I see that they're shut down, I clap and I jump for joy. I think it's amazing. I don't think that's how we should be utilizing these animals. But from their perspective, right, they think this is what they're supposed to do. Now, it's a perspective thing. It's a perspective thing. Now, they can completely take their desire to, to be dog aggressive and turn it around and put them on tug toys and really fulfill them biologically that way instead of aiming it towards another dog, which is just absolutely brutal and vicious on every level. And I just, honestly, if I ever see that shit, I have to turn the channel because it is fucking brutal. The, and I've seen dogs fight a lot. I've been, been a part of this game a lot. And... Believe me, that was not on purpose. That was definitely like, whoops. <laughs> like, holy fuck, dude. It is the energy and what they're capable of and their desire to never stop until the game over. It, it's, it's something to behold, man. Something I don't ever want to see or ever want you to see. So anyway, I'm not going to drop the names of the people that I knew that used to be dogfighters because you'll probably go start some shit with them. But people change, okay? People change. And... um I, I'm the type of person that I'm a pretty forgiving dude as much as I fucking absolutely despise the act of making two dogs fight. They changed and they actually, it's one of the reasons why they're actually dog trainers and they're actually so valuable because their vantage point is so different and they have such a deeper understanding of these particular dogs. So in any case, they actually, their perspective is that they love these dogs. Like they, they, like, I know it's really, really weird to say that because love is subjective to a degree, right? Love is subjective to a degree. Like, they take pride in their trophy dogs. They're dogs that never lose. Like, now again, this is just from their vantage point. Don't fucking project this shit on me. I'm just telling you what I've learned. So, it's like, it's, it's interesting though because if the dog loses, they just look at it like, eh, wasn't a good dog. And then the dog dies and fucking, it's just like... It's brutal. It's a it's a brutal and and they don't look at them like we look at them. In my in my opinion, they R Rosie and 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 Jolie, they're my life. They're my family. Like I would, you know, to, to even what? 
I love my dogs as far as I like you love your dogs, but you're making them fight. Yeah. It's a passion. Like, for example, like dog fighting for these people is like being really into hot rods and like having that super massive hobby, only just much more disgusting and brutal. Right. So just to give you a little insight, man, these guys take such pride in their shit until the dog loses. If the dog loses, hmm, got to get a better dog. Like, that's how brutal it is. Like, that's how fucking, like, different the perspective is. And so, man, you know, when I learned about all this stuff, I was like, huh, that's interesting. I don't fuck with it at all. But it's interesting to learn this from your vantage point being is like you're somebody that actually used to do this. And it's like, wow, man. Um, I would have, yeah, like I said, like I wouldn't involve myself. It, I have a, you know, I would never involve myself in trying to like bring a dog fighting ring down, especially if they learn who I am, dude, dude, I am not about to have those type of people coming after me. Sorry, because those aren't the type of people that are going to just fucking do an internet smear campaign. Those are the type of people that will show up to your house and fuck that. I got a family and you know, I'm armed to the T and the last thing I want to do is have to fucking brrr, shoot my way out. And then I go to jail and shit for some, you know what I mean? So all the more power to people who are, you know, doing their best to uh, to try to shut those people down. I really hope they're successful, to be honest, because again, as much as I've like learned the other side, the, the perspective and like, you know, the whole lifestyle, which it'll never go away. I don't know if I've said that. Dog fighting will be a thing. It'll just never be mainstream. It'll never be put on the internet and things like that. People are always going to, and if you shut that one down, that make no never mind to me. The only reason why Mike Vick stopped doing it is because he was such a high profile dude. Mike Vick would have kept doing that shit had he not got caught. And we all know that. Um, anyway, man, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight. I, um, I've been a part of some pretty gnarly fights and shit. And I've seen that side of the dog. And I've got scars to prove that. And I'm, I'm not proud of those moments because those were mistakes on my part. Um, stick around, man. Subscribe to the channel because I will tell you what I believe to be the most effective way to stop two pit bull dogs, bully breeds, um, stop them from fighting the most uh, successful and safe, safest, safest way. Because I can't tell you how many times I got involved and got myself fucked up because I just didn't really know how to, didn't really know how to handle that situation. It's a high, high stress, high, it's just chaotic. Everything's happening so fast, but I will make that video for you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Captain Chad Gabs, AKA the Dog Moses. This is TFE TV. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, if you haven't yet, so you don't miss any future videos, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.